Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Dodge, Marshal. I've only been gone a week, Sam. Uh, you got any rye left? The kitty over there has got the last bottle, Marshal. Uh, I'll have some tomorrow when the Santa Fe gets in. Good. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'll see if I can talk Kitty out of a drink. Sure. Oh, I heard you were back, Matt. How are you? You, uh, saving that bottle for me, Kitty. Oh, you know, I never drink rye. <laughs> Thanks. Well, here's to you. Thank you. Ah, that's the closest I've been to civilization in a week. Did you find what you're after? Yeah, I found him, all right. Say, uh, what's that stuff you're drinking? Oh, this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I keep the bottle on the floor. Looks better. Let me see it. Professor Bones Wonder Medicine? Celebrated vegetable pulmonic detergent. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hope it tastes better than it reads. Oh, it tastes fine, Matt. It makes you feel fine, too. Essential oil of worm seed, the new and valuable curative. Yeah. Professor Bone, Ph.D., and Pulmist. Professor of Practical and Medical Botany, Natural and Civil History. <laughs> oh, well, that, that makes sense. Kitty, where in the world did you get hold of this? Oh, everybody's taking his mask. Oh, I forgot you were away when Professor Bone arrived. Well, he arrived? You mean he's here in Dodge? Oh, well, sure. He came last Thursday. He's got a fancy wagon he left us from every day. About this time, as a matter of fact. You should hear him, Matt. He's, he's great. Uh, yeah, 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 he must be. No, no, he really is. What's in that tonic, Kitty? You're, you're kind of misty already, aren't you? Oh, it makes you feel great, Matt. Try some here. No, you... no, no, thanks. I don't need any worm seed oil. <laughs> Liquor does me all the harm I need. Uh, you'll buy some. Once you've heard him talk, he's awful smart, Matt. Yeah, well, he must be. He's a professor. It says so on the bottle. Here. Oh, I don't care if he's a professor or not. He makes wonderful tonic. Yeah, I can see that he does. Oh, Matt. Yes, uh, Matt. I'm, I'm glad you're back. You come with me. Hello, Doc. Sit down. No, you come with me outside. I want you to see this spectacle. What are you talking about? Uh, this red-nosed old scarecrow, Loot Bone. He ought to be tarred and feathered, that's what. Oh, oh no, Doc. Look, God, right there. There's a bottle of it. Kitty. Is that yours? Well, it's good, Doc. It's real good. I'm going to smash this in the street. Oh, no. I... And if I find you drinking any more of this, I'll... I'll paddle you. That's what I'll do. Oh, really? You see? You see what it does to people? Come on. Come on, Matt. It's okay, Doc. I might as well find out what this is all about. You will excuse us, won't you, Kitty? You, not Doc. I mean what I said, Kitty. Oh, boy. Come on, let's go. Yes, that's it, Doc. Oh, Kitty. Ah, there's his wagon. And look at that crowd of fools. Well, what's so wrong with that, Doc? I'll tell you later. First, I want you to hear him talk. The man's demented, that's what. And he's dangerous, Matt. He's deadly dangerous. You there, boy. Sit up now. Look spry. Step lively. This is your great-grandpa. And then some. My name? 
Oh, I've been called Johnny Reb, and I've been called Billy Yank. I'm a soldier. Civil War. What you want to know about soldiering? Uh, march? Oh, we did it a-plenty. Both heavy marching order and light marching order. See, light marching order meant we was to march only with musket, ammunition, haversack, and canteen. And be ready for working or for fighting. Well, that was nothing. It was the heavy marching order we didn't like. Oh, that meant carrying everything you owned on a long march to the next field of battle or else a new camp. There was never enough water, and sometimes we wouldn't have us nothing to eat for a whole day. And us, in our heavy woolens, carrying 50 or 60 pounds on our backs, trudging down dusty roads in the summer and muddy ones in the winter. <laughs> Still, it was something to see. First, there'd be the adjutant, then the scouts, then the band and drum corps, then the colonel and the lieutenant colonel, then the two surgeons and the hospital knapsack carrier. <laughs> yeah, we was quite a sight, I tell you. Even though some of us didn't have shoes and straggled a bit sometimes. Now, now you, boy, you got shoes special built to last. And if you watch yourself, blame that they don't help protect your feet from frostbite and things like that. But what's real important, lots of times you got trucks to carry your gear. And you, too, for which you can thank your lucky stars and stripes. Oh, believe you me, son, it takes more than just men and guns and generals to make you an army. It takes knowing somebody's thinking about your derned old feet and your aching back, like that good transportation corps you've got. Danged if it don't. Yes. Right down there where the crowd is. He's standing in the back of his wagon. You see? He's finished entertaining them now. We're just in time for the serious part. Yes, so come on. Hurry along now. Come I am, Doc. I am. While serving as personal surgeon to the King of Santo Del Rio. Oh, that, oh, that lie. Just take it easy, Doc. Let's listen. Wonder Medicine has cured more than 3,000 cases of ADU, 2,500 of chronic inflammatory rheumatism, 2,000 of green sickness, 1,000 of mercurial diseases, 1,500 of liver affections, and 6,000 of general divinity. Uh, he ought to be hung. It purifies, cleanses, and strengthens the fountain springs of life, and infuses new vigor throughout the entire body. In fact, my friends, Professor Bones' wonder medicine will cure all disorders incident to the human race, oh, without exception, no matter what the age, circumstance, or place of residence of the afflicted patient. Hey, Professor, I live over near Stinking Springs. Will it cure me? <laughs> <laughs> you are drunk. Quite a day ever since I was weaned, Professor. I pity you, my friend. Professor, when I was 12, I got drunk and went to sleep in a hackberry tree. I never did find out how I got down. <laughs> oh, don't laugh. Ladies and gentlemen, don't laugh. Pity the poor man, the poor wretch. Whiskey has him crushed in its foul trap. His eyes roomy, his brains awash, his manhood's gone. Are you shut up? Whiskey, I tell you, whiskey did it. Now, any more talk about me and I'll put a bullet in you, Professor. Evil man, drunken specter. I'm telling you, no more. No, no more. That's right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, about to appear on the wagon beside me, is a man you all know and respect. One of your finest and most worthy citizens. A man whose very presence contributes mightily to the progress of your fair town. A man whose soul is pure, but whose body, ah, whose body has been the host of five separate diseases, any one of which would soon have been fatal. But now he is saved. Three bottles of Professor Bones' wonder medicine has done it. And here he is to tell you of this miraculous cure in his own words. Step forward, sir, and speak. Speak for the sake of your fellow man. Be great heavens, Matt. It's Chester. Yeah. Hey, Chester. Oh, oh Mr. Dillon. Get down off there. Yes, sir. 
But my mind, young yeah, man, you've got to talk to the Come people. on, hurry it up, Chester. Oh, who are you, sir? What are you doing? Now, you come back here, you. Come, Go come on back. with your lecture, Professor. Never mind about him. Hey, Professor. What? Professor, that stuff for your cure anything? Anything, my friend. Every disorder known to medical faculty. Well, uh, my old man, he's 80, and he got a bean stuck in his throat. Oh, and he said, no, now, shut up, all of you. It's true. <laughs> Professor, how about that? I'll come to see your father, sir. I'll visit him as soon as I'm able to pass a few bottles down among the good people gathered here. Uh, hello, Mr. Jones. Doc. Come on, let's get out of here. Just of all people. Well, ma'am. I suppose he's got you all doped up for that stuff, too, Chester. Oh, it makes you feel great, Doc. Is that why you were up there? Well, no, sir. Uh, I, I got a deal with the professor for my spare time. See, Mr. Dillon, he pays me a dollar a day and gives me all the medicine I can drink free. Oh, it's idiots like you that make it possible for such crackery, Chester. Oh, now, Doc, I'm not no idiot. Well, you think I've been acting like one? Well, that's not what's important. Matt, I've analyzed some of Bone's so-called medicine. It's got opium in it, for one thing. Oh, you think it's dangerous, Of Doc? course it is. People can get in the habit. And what's worth if something is wrong with them and they're taking that stuff, they wouldn't fight it out until it's too late. You've got to stop this business, Matt. Yeah, I suppose you're right, Doc. Either you stop him or by heaven I'll shoot him. I'm serious, Matt. All right, Doc, I'll talk to him a little later. In the meantime, you stay away from him, Chester. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Donner. I didn't know. Causes dropsy and gout, unhappy wives, empty larders, naked children, lost cows, leaky roofs, bloody noses, broken shins, flat purses, and bad oh, reputation. Oh, oh, oh. Catch it up for that, Professor. Now get out of here before I break a bottle of good whiskey over your head. You, you're a destroyer of men. Agent of the devil. Shut up. Nobody's going to preach against liquor in this place. I'll fix you good. All right, hold it, Sam. Professor Bone, I'd like to have a word with you. And who are you, sir? I'm a U.S. Marshal. Now, let's sit over at that table over there, huh? Come on. Oh, I'm at your service, Marshal. Well, uh... And to what do I owe this honor, sir? Well, it isn't exactly an honor, Professor. I want you to stop putting opium in that stuff that you're selling. Oh, come now, Marshal. Surely you don't believe... Doc me. Adams has analyzed it, Professor, and either you make it harmless or I'm going to run you out of Dodge. Yes, sir. I believe you will. Now, you're free to sell it and you're free to do all the talking you want, but that's all. I, I'm a lonely old man, Marshal, and I'm tired of wandering. I'll do what you say. Good. And I hope you don't get yourself into trouble with that preaching about liquor. I've been fighting against drink ever since I was a youth. What about opium? Isn't that just as bad? Oh, there's not enough of my medicine to do any harm, Marshal. Maybe. But why are you so strong about whiskey? <clears throat> well, Marshal, when I was a child of 12, my grandfather got drunk and threw a pet owl onto a horse that was standing nearby. What? He did. And it frightened the horse into kicking an orphan boy. Broke the rib. And here he is, to tell you of this miraculous cure in his own words. Step forward, sir, and speak. Speak for the sake of... So I'm glad you're here. Now, what's the trouble? Well, this here professor's the trouble, and I'll tell you. Now, my old man, he had a bean stuck in his throat, and the professor, he told me, give him a steam bath, and then throw cold water on him. And, and I was doing it. Well, what for? Well, so as he'd catch a cold and cough and bring up the bean? No, of all of But it didn't work, Mr. Well, Reed? it killed him. My old man is dead. Dead? Good heavens. And I'm going to kill you for it, Professor. No, you won't, Reeves. Well, no man can die of a mere cold, Mr. Reeves. So, something must have gone wrong. Oh, something went wrong, all right. Come on, we'll get dark and go see what this is all about. Can you get the idea of shooting anybody out of your head, Reeves? Maybe I will. <laughs> Another visit with Joe and Daphne Forsythe. Joe? Yeah, Daphne? Look 
looked at this story about savings bonds in the paper. Yeah, what about it? Do you think that's the best way to tell people about savings bonds? Why not? Look, see, it says here that savings bonds are a guaranteed investment. Right now, they pay off at the rate of four bucks at maturity for every three bucks invested. Uh Uh-uh. You're not convinced? Mm Mm-mm. Why not? No salesmanship. No salesmanship? What more do you need to know? Why, right now, more than eight million Americans are buying saving bonds regularly through the payroll savings plan. So? So what? That's what I say. So what? Now, look, Daphne, if millions of Americans are convinced that saving bonds are their best investment, not only financially, but for the future of their country, what the heck is bothering you? Well, I think they could sell a lot more with salesmanship. You know, slogans and jingles. Listen, if you're spending more and saving less, try a savings bond. Oh, boy. Or or maybe... uh, Savings bond pay good like an investment should. Daphne. You get a lot to like in a savings bond. Interest, earnings guaranteed. Wow. Well, did I sell you? Yeah, but I forgot what it was you were selling. (laughs) Savings bond. I'll take a hundred. Oh, Joe. Professor Boone wasn't a normal, everyday type of citizen, but he wasn't a murderer either. And whatever had gone wrong and killed Reeves' father couldn't be blamed entirely on him. The way I looked at it, Reeves was a fool to follow his advice in the first place. Now we found the old man still lying in a steam bath that Reeves had made. All he'd done was to dig a big hole in the ground with a fire pit in the middle and then stretch some canvas across the top for a roof. Doc climbed down into it. And after a few minutes, he came back out again. Yeah. Well, Reeves, all I can figure is your father died of a heart attack. Well, I, I don't believe that, Doc. You were strong as a bull, that old man. I know, but I don't think there's nothing else that could have cost it. How long did you have him in there, Reeves? Oh, maybe a half hour, Marshal. He was just having a fine time when I left him. He poured a whole bottle of vinegar on them rocks, and I just went up to the house to get him some more. Vinegar? Well, sure. Professor here says it helped make him sweat. Wait a minute. What's wrong? It's the vinegar that killed him, Reeves. But uh, how do you mean? That's limestone you used in there, isn't it? Sure, limestone. All right. Now, you put vinegar on hot limestone, and it'll make carbonic acid gas. And that's what suffocated your old man. Now, I didn't tell you to use limestone, Mr. Reeves. You can't blame me for that. No. But the vinegar was your idea, Professor. I still say you murdered him. Now, wait a minute, Reeves. You're not being sensible. This thing was an accident, that's all. I am not a murderer. I never hurt anybody in my life. You don't even know what you do, you old buzzard. Selling that slop of yours loaded with narcotics. Did you tell him to stop that, Matt? Yes, he said he would. My medicine is as pure as the dew, Jim. Pure as dew. I'm going to analyze it every day you're here, and I hope that that won't be much longer. I, I'm a lonely old man, sir. The only home I have is my wagon. Well, then go live in it, but somewhere else. You've caused enough trouble around here. But am, am I to be banished from the face of the earth? Am I not a man like any other man? Do you think I have no heart? No feelings, no soul. Oh, why don't you shut up and get out of here, Professor? I want to bury my daddy. I would gladly help you in that task, Mr. Reeves. Oh, no. No, sir, not you. Not by a long sight. You are unkind, sir. Gentlemen, I take my leave of you. Good day. For some reason, the three of us stood there in silence and watched Professor Bone walk away. He stopped once and glanced back at us for a moment, then he went on. Later, when we got back to Front Street, his wagon was gone, and we figured that probably that was the last we'd ever see of him. Dodge was fairly quiet that night, and when somebody reported seeing a fire of some kind out on the prairie, I decided I might as well ride out and have a look. 
Now there's no flames left, Mr. Jones. It must be all burnt out. I don't remember a house of any kind around here. I wonder what it was. Mm, maybe just a prairie fire that didn't really get started. Wait a minute, there's something, Chester, over there, see? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. I can see a few coals. Like a wagon, Mr. Dillon. All burnt up. That's Professor Bones' wagon, Chester. By golly, you're right. And that's his horse, too. Professor? Professor Bones? Come on, let's take a look. Where in the world do you reckon he could be, Mr. Dillon? I don't know, Chester. Here, look out now. I'm going to try to move something. You think that's the profession? Yeah, I'm afraid so, Chester. Poor old fella. He must have been asleep and his wagon caught fire. Yeah, maybe. Funny thing, he couldn't get out, though. Unless he was drunk or something. Professor Bone didn't drink, Chester. Yes, sir, that's right. I forgot. He sure didn't. You think maybe somebody did this a purpose, Mr. Dillon? Well, they had two or three men pretty mad at him. Or maybe it was Indians. No, not this close to Dodge. No. No, I guess not. I don't know, Chester. A lot of things can happen to people who get too lonely. Well, come on, let's get out of here. We'll take care of him in the morning. and directed by Norman McDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The music was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns were composed by Ray Kemper and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Parley Bear as Chester, Howard McNear as Doc, and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. George Walsh speaking. Join us again next week for another story of the western frontier of America in the 1870s on Gunsmoke. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.